Okay, now some of you are gonna say, Mr. Wu, um, this is not looking good, like we don't have much time and part three is worth just as many marks as part two, um, but I think you're gonna find it's, it's actually much simpler than what we had to go at in part two, which means that, as we've always said, if you are doing this question or a question like this in the exam, you're like, I can't get part two. Because they give you that result, you can use part two for part three, even if you haven't proved it, just invoke part two as I'm about to do, okay? So let's have a look at the situation. This is exactly what I was just kind of flagging earlier in terms of that when you pull the parachute. You got Jack and Jill. Jill also jumps out of the airplane and her situation is exactly the same in terms of they have the same mass, their parachutes are the same. So all your constant of proportionality in your M, um, we're gonna have the same situation essentially. But Jack is a little nervous, I guess, or maybe just wants to take in the scenery. So um, Jack opens the parachute very early at one third of VT. So in other words, they, Jack has not had much time to accelerate out of um, his fall, right? So he pulls his parachute at that time, but Jill waits longer, waits until she speeds up and her terminal velocity for with the parachute, um, while she hasn't opened a parachute, it gets to triple of that velocity. Jack's speed increases because um, he hasn't reached it yet, but Jill's speed decreases to bring herself down to, she's slowing down after she's pulled the parachute. Show that in the time taken for Jack's speed to double, Jill's speed has halved. Okay, how do we do this? Well, firstly, remember, V0 is the jumper's velocity once the chute opens, okay? So once you have that in mind, that sort of indicates for Jack and Jill separately what's gonna go on here. I've got a separate V0 for each of them. So um, first, and I literally write this, okay, because I need to distinguish in my working, I'm gonna have a V0 for Jack and a V0 for Jill. Um, and I suppose I could call them like, I could add more letters into things and have them like V0G and V0J, um, but that's even more confusing because like I've already got G, it's gravity. So I'm just gonna use words to say, first let's consider Jack's situation because we began this question with him. Um, when I think about Jack's situation, um, Jack's V0 is the one third VT that was provided in the question, right? So I will write Jack's V0 equals a third of VT. And you can see me getting that from this data in the question right there, okay? so. So when does his, like what is his, um, what is his velocity gonna be equal to once it doubles that, right? Because that's the question it's asking me, show the, the time taken for Jack's speed to double, right? So I'm gonna say, since this is his V0, right? His speed doubles um, when he reaches double of that value, right? His speed doubles when V equals, uh, instead of one third of VT, it'll be two thirds of VT. Okay, so I'm trying to find a time for this. So therefore, I'm just gonna go back to part two. And like I said, regardless of whether I've proved it or not, I'm just gonna say from part two, um, this occurs when uh, this will be T equals, and I'm gonna substitute in this particular value for V, right? So it is a bit of a messy thing because I've got so many things going on in the log, but it will simplify out a lot. So just stay with it. You get VT on 2G at the front. Here comes the log term, and then I'm gonna put in two thirds VT um, and one third VT in all the appropriate spots for, well, I had to scroll fair way, um, for all of this, right? In fact, let me just copy and paste this so I have it nearby. Oopsie daisy. Copy this, and it'll make the substitution a bit easier. Let's, let's tuck it over here, and I'll make sure it's a different color just so I can see it separately. Okay, here we go. So, um, to begin with, I've got uh, the VT plus V up the top there, so that's why um, that V I'm substituting for two thirds VT. And then on the right hand side of the numerator, I've got VT minus V0, but my V0 is, is this V0, right? It's a third VT. There we go, okay? There's the numerator. There's a whole lot that we can cancel in a second and factorize out, but I will leave that because you can see the denominator is gonna do the same thing, right? On the denominator, I've got VT minus uh, V, which I think we just said was two thirds VT. And then I've got uh, VT plus V0, which we already said um, is gonna be uh, VT plus um, a third VT. All right, there we go. 
Now, like I said, there's a lot can be factorized out here, right? There's a VT you can factorize from here and a VT you can factorize from here. So you can take out a VT squared on the numerator, but you can do the identical process on the denominator. So they're just gonna cancel with each other, a VT squared on VT squared um, on the top and bottom. So therefore, um, let me write that VT on 2G out the front, log of. Once you've done all that canceling, what do you end up with? Well, it looks to me like I've got, um, let's put some big fat brackets around here. Um, one of these plus two thirds is five thirds. Five thirds. What am I multiplying on the top? This is one of these minus a third of these, so that's times two thirds. And then on the denominator, what have I got here? Um, I've got one take away two thirds, so last I checked that was one third. And then I've got one plus a third, so that's four thirds. Okay, now again, uh, close my bracket. Lots of cancelling happening, right? Um, these threes will cancel with these threes. Um, and you can see that two will cancel with one of the factors on two on the bottom, so that leaves you with the two there. Um, and looking at the numerator and the denominator, all you end up with is, after you have this VT on 2G at the front, log of, this is the simplification, five over two. That's the time. What's that equal to? No idea, because I actually don't have numbers for that terminal velocity. Um, they haven't defined gravity for me either. But this is the time it takes for um, Jack's speed to double. So this is when Jack's speed doubles. Now, to get to the um, final piece of this, all I need to know is, well, what about for Jill, right? She's not speeding up, doubling her speed, she's slowing down, so her speed is gonna halve. So again, to separate out these bits of working, because I'm gonna have a whole new V0, I'm gonna redefine it, I'm gonna say, well now, just consider Jill, right? Um, this is so, I think, fastly superior to um, adding even more new pronumerals for us, um, but I'm just gonna rehearse the same argument that I made before, right? Her V0 is different, it's triple, that terminal velocity. So her speed halves when it's half of that, right? Um, so that's her V0, her speed halves when uh, her V is equal to, uh, instead of three, it'll be three on two times the terminal velocity, right? Again, I'm gonna invoke part two, so I'll say from part two, and now I'm gonna do the same deal, right? I'm just substituting in, uh, here's that result up here in pink, which I, whoopsie daisy, which I used before, so let's just push it down here. Oopsie daisy, all the way so I can actually see it. Okay, I've just got a different V and a different V0, which I'm gonna substitute, but it's gonna work much the same way. And fingers crossed, my arithmetic will mean that I will just simplify out to the same time, okay? So T is gonna be equal to, I've written this like 15 times at this point, so I know there's a VT on 2G out the front. Log of, okay, here we go. Let's do the substitution. VT plus, um, this is three on two VT. There's my current speed. And then I've got uh, VT minus three VT on the numerator because um, that's her, that's Jill's uh, initial speed once she opens the chute. That's all divided by uh, VT minus that same three VT I was saying before. And it's gonna be VT, uh, oopsie daisy, that's actually meant to be my current speed. So that should be three on two. I think, and then it's gonna be VT um, plus three VT here. Um, there was the initial velocity. Now, this is the situation that I mentioned before, right? You can see this here is gonna become negative, right? VT minus three VT will be minus two VT, but this negative up in the numerator will cancel with this negative down here in the denominator, and that's why I don't need to worry about those absolute value signs. In this context, everything will come out in the wash. I will do that exact same cancelling of VT squared on VT squared uh, there up the top. Thank you, Varen. Uh, I Yes, absolutely, I would, I would do my job. I, I took it. Uh, <laughs> I took it back, I should say. Um, you can see there, once I cancel that out, what do you get left with up the top? Um, nice big brackets again. Five on two uh, out the front there from adding that. Here comes the negative two um, on the right hand side. What do I get here? This is gonna be one take away one and a half is negative a half, so there are the negatives canceling. And then I'm gonna multiply by four, um, one plus three on the denominator, so that's that. Um, and you can see all this canceling that's happening, right? It's even more than before. Um, this is all 
negative two. And this negative two at the top just perfectly cancels with that, leaving you with the five on two, which we got before. So I'll write that just for completeness. So this is the same time, which is when Jill's speed halves. So I'll write that when Jill's speed halves. And just to tie it all up in a neat bow, um, I can just say, well, these are the same time, right? There's a T and there's a T. So I'm gonna say, therefore, these occur simultaneously. Here's my conclusion. As I usually say, as required. So, how's that? I told you I'd finish with time to spare. Uh, this, this is it. Um, three marks for this last section here. Um, I would say because it's so similar how you deal with um, Jack's situation and with Jill's, if you do it for one, you've pretty much done it for the other one. So I think it really came um, across to this reasoning here and being able to substitute appropriately into part two. And from there, it's some fairly simple, it's not even algebra really, it's, it's arithmetic mostly, uh, to deal with all those fractions and then cancel appropriately. So, thank you for working through that with me. I hope you found that helpful and this question is far less um, scary than it initially seems, at least as it did for most of the state. Um, and like I said, there were a couple of twists and turns in this integration, which I think was what gave some of you some trouble, but hopefully this result, um, or the way I've shown it, um, is helpful to you.